He claims to have been raised in a modern Illuminati family that dates back to the 1700s. He says that, as a child, he was made to practice black magic and witchcraft. His name is Doc Marquis. My family goes back into the Illuminati all the way back to 1789. Of course, we have no way of either confirming or denying Doc's claims, but it is worth noting that he has acted as an expert on the occult for law enforcement and the FBI. According to his publisher, in the past he has appeared on and consulted for Geraldo Rivera and Oprah Winfrey, and for shows like Hard Copy, Inside Edition, and Unsolved Mysteries. Doc has been a Christian since 1979, but he says that part of his upbringing in a family that worshipped Lucifer was to be taught about the secret Illuminati symbols of the dollar bill, and that understanding them begins with the Rothschild dynasty. Maya Amsha Rothschild had made a very interesting and profound statement. He said, allow me to control and issue the money of a nation, and I care not who writes its laws. And he was right. Meyer Amschel Rothschild is called the founding father of international finance. In 2005, Forbes magazine ranked him seventh on their list of the 20 most influential businessmen of all time. All of this happened um, back in 1776. And this was during May 1st and shortly thereafter. The significance behind that is that on May 1st, 1776, Dr. Adam Bison, who was a devout Jesuit um, priest, who was given the chair of the professorship of religious um, studies at Ingolstadt University, was approached by Maya Amschel Bauer, who would later change his last name to Rothschild, along with 12 of his most financially influential friends. They knew Weishaupt at that particular time was not only a genius when it came to the occult world, but Weishaupt also had an axe to grind because it was the Catholic Church that just recently defrocked him. He was no longer a Jesuit priest and he was going to send a message to them, to the monarchies of Europe and to all other people who would try to have their will over his. What Rothschild and Weisopt came up with was a plan to destroy the old world system of government through monarchies and the church and to set up a new world order in its place. This is said to be the great plan of all the secret societies. So what happened? My Angel Bauer approached Weisopt and basically told him we know you've got the occult knowledge and genius to put it all together. We've got the money. You do it, we'll back it. Just to paraphrase what really happened. So in 1773, Weishaupt started creating what had never been created before. The idea of Illuminism had always been around, ever since the days of Babylon, with the co-founders of being that Nimrod and Semiramis but no one had ever been able to actualize it. However, May 1st, 1776, the order of the Illuminati had become a reality under the auspices of Dr. Adam Weissman. Now, like other nations, orders, countries and such, they have their two great seals. The order of the Illuminati does. Those two seals can be found on the back of a one dollar bill. People mistake those to be the two great seals of the United States of America. They are not. Those are the two seals of the order, order of the Illuminati. And I'm going to explain it to you. In order to understand the seal itself, we have to first take a look at every single thing that composites it. We look at the first part of it on, on our left, which would be the truncated pyramid one. Above it is a 13-letter Latin expression that says annuit corruptus and directly underneath the base of the pyramid is a three-word Latin expression which is novus ordo seclorum. If you were to look up the word, let's say work, 
in the English um, um, dictionary, you're going to find at least 50 different meanings for it. It is the same thing in Latin. Different words have different meanings. They have more than one meaning. Um, the word seculum, one of the definitive meanings is it is um, secular. Something that is secular is of the world. So it is proper, very proper, to translate the bottom as new world order, the novus order seculum. The whole of it is saying, announcing the birth of a new world order. This would be Dr. Adam Weishaupt himself, the very first head of the order of the Illuminati. It was Weishaupt who had himself come up with a seven-part plan to create what he called the Novus Ordo Seclum, or the New World Order. This is the person responsible for it. The interesting thing about the front of the dollar bill is that there are four huge ones. There is one in every single corner. Now, if we look at each of every single one of them, they each have an oval around it, except for the top right hand one. Now, if we look at this blow up version of it, you will find there's no oval. This is a shield that is surrounding the one. Now, the reason there was a shield here is because it's very similar to the original shield that was given to the Rothschild family when Baron Meyer Amschel Rothschild had become um, knighted in England and received the lordship. If we look across the top of this shield, all the way to the left-hand side, it drops down and forms a crescent moon. It's a crescent moon because it represents the female goddess in the occult world. At the bottom of that shield, of, excuse me, of that lunar moon, you will see the owl. And it's very obvious, once you take a good look at that part of the crescent moon, and it is the same Illuminati owl that is being worshipped at the Bohemian Grove in California by those members of the Bohemian Grove, where presidents, premiers, kings and queens and heads of nations throughout this world have met. You can tell just by looking at this photo, that is a 40-foot owl. It is made out of oak and that the worshippers are surrounding that fire pit around that altar which is easily reflected in the lake around them. This is definitely the owl of the Illuminati. The rituals performed at the Bohemian Grove are occult and idolatrous. One of them, called the cremation of care, is supposed to be a mock human sacrifice, though some suggest that real killings take place. When President Nixon was there, he commented about the extreme homosexual environment at this all-male boys club. Among other powerful American leaders who have been spotted at the Grove are Ronald Reagan, Dwight Eisenhower, Jimmy Carter, Newt Gingrich, and George Bush, Jr. and Sr. Now, when we take a look at the O, it is actually, occultically speaking, the shape of the Ouroboros, the snake that's going around in a circle, devouring itself. This O is actually the eye in this lady's face that they want to look at. This is the O. Now, what's in the center of this O? You take a good look. It is the exact same owl of the Illuminati that we saw on the back of the one dollar bill. So the question then becomes, who owns L'Oreal? But the owl seems to be a major symbol for the secret societies, as they are found repeatedly inside government buildings in Washington, D.C. And a giant owl figure is even seen in the street design, with the United States Capitol in the midst of it. Now the Druids, um, from um, the Gaelic means, Druid means men of oak. These people worshipped creation among other things, but um, their sacred symbol was the owl because 
the ancient god of magic and of the hunt was Pallas Athena. Her bird was the owl, and that owl represented wisdom it always has. Pallas Athena was also the goddess figure who was said to inspire Sir Francis Bacon. But now look at this owl seal at the Bohemian Grove, where it says, Weaving spiders come not here. While the line is taken from Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, could this also be a veiled reference to what seems like a spider web design that forms the background of the dollar bill? Are there additional secrets hidden there? Now, I'm sure you've heard of um, a Rorschach smear or the Rorschach ink blot test as created by Dr. Rorschach himself. Um, you see the ink in the forefront and everything else is in the background. This way your subconscious mind is supposed to pick up on what's on the foreground and you're supposed to be able to tell what you are subconsciously seeing. Notice how it's very busy. Lot of intersection diagonally lines, you can't make out what's there. But let's get rid of the background noise, get rid of all the diagonal lines on, that doesn't belong there, and let's reverse the principle of Roshan and take what's in the background and bring it to the forefront and see what's there. Because once we do that, we find out it's quite obvious that there is another Illuminati owl and that it is perched on something that looks like an arrow. That is what they don't want you to see. Once you see this owl here and compare it to the other one on the left hand side of it, it becomes very obvious that this is an owl. You can now begin to, to distinguish beyond all that busy signals and such that they don't want you to look through, yet they place there in honor of the totem bird, the Owl of Wisdom, which is um, the totem bird because their god, Lucifer, was supposed to have been the wisest of all of God's creation. Wisdom of Lucifer, wisdom into the bird, wisdom into the word Illuminati. Therefore, you know, the chain of wisdom is followed all the way through. All right, now, did they teach you this in the Illuminati? Yes. Well, I want you to understand that the first symbol is known as a pentalpha, from the Greek word for five, pente. Um, it is a five-pointed star. Now, this next one is a pentacle. Now, it looks similar, but I want you to notice how it is interwoven. It runs through and in between itself. Now, this next symbol is what's known as the Star of David, the Morgan David, the Jewish Star, the Seal of Solomon. There's numbers for it. This is the symbol for the nation of Israel. Now, when you take a look at it very carefully, you will notice that it is two equilateral triangles that are interwoven. This shows the union of God with man. However, when you look at the next one, it's similar to it. It's known as a hexagon. This is when you take two equilateral triangles, place one on top of another. Symbolically speaking, you're placing man above God. Now, this next symbol is the foulest, the most evil of all symbols in the occult world. There is nothing that can even come close. It is known as the hexagram. It is the six-pointed star with a circle surrounding it. It is this symbol that must be used during high ceremonial magic or high ceremonial witchcraft when you are summoning up demons to this plane of existence. The use of the hexagram is said by Doc to be very symbolic and seems to represent the occult concept of a Christ figure just as the Maitreya was for Nicholas Rorick and Henry Wallace. But what Christ do they mean? Doc believes the pattern of hexagrams in the design of the dollar bill provides the clue. If we take a look 
at the 13 stars directly above the head of the eagle and connect the dots, you will see where the very first hexagram is located. And if you notice that surrounding the hexagram is the 28 guidelines that make a circle. Now, inside every single point, the six points, is a star. There are six of them. They surround now the seven stars. Remember, six is the number of man, seven is the number of a god. Now, it is man that is surrounding God or is placed above God. If what Doc is saying is true, this could represent the person the Bible calls the man of sin, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Doc's interpretation seems to also fit the worship of Lucifer, for in the Bible, Lucifer declares that he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. Next, Doc claims a second hexagram can be found by connecting the various points where the much talked about number 13 is represented. And don't try to tell me it's the 13 colonies. There are 13 stars above the eagle's head, 13 stripes in the shield, 13 leaves on the olive branch, 13 arrows in the eagle's talon, and then 13 letters in the phrase E Pluribus Unum, which makes for two points on either side of the eagle's head, for the six points total of the hexagram. If we take a close look at the same seal and connect all the 13 together, just like we did when we were kids, when we were playing that game, connect the dots, once we connect all the 13s, it becomes very apparent where the second hexagram can be found. In this one, which is very obvious, already comes with a circle around it. So this is the second hexagram here in figure two? Yes. And then where's the third hexagram? The third hexagram can be found on the other part of the Great Seal. Again, connect all the 13 together, the 13 um, letters, the 13 um, steps in the pyramid, connect all this together. And you'll note, with the circle that's already there, it forms the third hexagram. In other words, a six, a six, and a six. A six, six, six. Doc has deciphered a code that, if there, would glorify Lucifer's Messiah, whom the Bible calls the Beast or Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, it reads, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Could there really be three six-pointed hexagrams on the dollar bill? Once we start at the base of the pyramid, which is the foundation of all things, and follow the design of the hexagram itself, you're gonna find out something very startling. We go from the M and follow the symbol all the way up to the A. The A cuts directly underneath the eye of Lucifer all the way to the S. The S connects all the way down. It goes in between the V and the I. and connects all the way to the O. And following the symbol, the O connects up and over along the symbol of the hexagram to the word N. In perfect sequence, it's M-A-S-O-N, Mason. It's not what a lot of other people have espoused that the symbol connects down to the M in Sacrum and that the word is an anagram or something like that. Those people who are doing that obviously don't know what they're talking about or they don't know how to plagiarize me correctly because the order of the Illuminati 
have stated and always will state. This is perfectly spelled out to be M A S O N Mason. This points conclusively that the Masons have been involved in the Order of the Illuminati. This was back during the Council of Willemsbad, which would have been July 16, 1782. All right, so what are we seeing? Now, if we look at the bottom one of the reverse side of the dollar bill, you'll see on the right-hand side that, again, there's a lot of busy intersecting diagonal lines. Yet, if we apply the same principle we just used to reveal the, the hidden owls of the Illuminati and apply it, we will find that there is now a skulled faced winged demon. And it is very obvious, once you take away the background, the busy noise, it becomes very apparent what it is and that it's been there all along. And if we just simply go and enlarge the, that section, just start with a small one and just Keep enlarging it and enlarge it even more. Even with the background noise there, as I call it, I think it becomes very apparent what we are now looking at. That it is still a skull-faced winged demon. And it is these demons that are protecting and blessing the two great seals of the Order of the Illuminati. And it would make perfect sense that it had to be demons used to protect these seals since I am convinced it was those same demons that handed them over to Thomas Jefferson when they first created them. I am convinced beyond all doubt that that indeed was a demon sent up from the bowels of hell probably under the direct orders of Lucifer himself. Doc Marquis makes it clear that he is no longer involved in the occult and that since becoming a Christian he has dedicated himself to warning others about the activities of the secret societies that worship Lucifer. I've been doing this now since the late 70s when I first left the Order of the Illuminati and that's when I'm, um, at that point I had become a born-again Christian. At that time I realized what I had um, been doing all along. Maybe in my own way of trying to make up for what I had done and I've done a lot of heinous things in this life. I begin to wonder if I'm not trying to make up or atone for some of those things I had done. And I know in my heart of hearts that as a born again child of the king, my sins have already been bought and paid for. But still there's just that part of me that still feels so guilty about everything I've done. So it could be in my own way, and I'm, I'm somewhat convinced that in my own way I'm still trying to make up for all those crimes I was guilty of when I was in the Illuminati.